Welcome back. Let's take a quick moment and talk about what is pinch versus what is selling. So to me, and this is just my definition, but selling is like this horrible four letter word. You get sold into something. I can't tell you how many clothes are in my closet that somebody sold me. Oh yeah, you look great in that. And I knew in the back of my mind I didn't, but somehow I got caught up in the moment and I'm left with something in my closet that I've actually never worn. The other thing about selling, it's imposing what you want. Yeah, you know what? You really need this. Yeah, you're going to find out in this lesson that let's change one four letter word for another so that you can get whatever it is that you want. So I have this little money formula, M-O-N-E-Y. All right, so we're going to start with this assumption concept. M stands for make assumptions. So what does that mean? Well, whenever you approach somebody, there's a reality. So you don't have to ask them any questions. You already know things about them. You know if they're a man or a woman. Sometimes maybe you don't actually nowadays, but you know they're a little different from you. If you have the same vibe, there's a way that you talk to them. If they're taller than you and you have to look up to them, there's a way you talk to them versus somebody you look down to. It's just kind of how life is. Now you can tell if they're maybe older than you, younger than you. Those are all just assumptions. Now you can get more detailed. You can look at their fingernails. You can look at the clothes they're wearing. And this is not a truism, but I will tell you, if you don't tweak how you talk to somebody based on some assumptions, you sound like a billboard. So let me give you an example. I've got this pen and this pen is a great pen that writes no matter whether you're young, old, or blah, 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 blah. you see how I got this posture and all of a sudden I'm like doing this pitch. I'm not talking to anybody, but if I'm talking to a kid, I might say, Hey, you know what I love a pen like this? Yeah. Is that you could write notes to mom and dad and you can tell them what you want for Christmas. You can write all kinds of dreams. Notice how my voice got a little different because I'm talking to a kid. I'm talking to somebody who looks like they're a successful entrepreneur. I might say funny thing. When you sign a check with a pen that looks like it's filled with diamonds, your deals get exponentially better. Wow. That's interesting, right? Different energy level based on who I'm talking to. All I'm trying to do is enroll them into buying a pen. So I want you to be very aware of when you talk to somebody, you know, it's really interesting too, if you're a guy and you're a bigger guy and you're talking to a small woman, you can't do the same kind of pitch on them where they feel like very, wow, don't do that to me. And it really involves active listening, but listening even in your make-believe voice. So why do I say that? It's because I met a gentleman not long ago and he was in the network marketing field and they, it's, the network marketing has a lot of stigma to it, right? But it's not really a field. You're selling a product. You've got a, a juice that you like or a vitamin or whatever it is that you're selling. Network marketing only means that you sell one-on-one -on -one, is that you enroll people. They don't spend a lot of money on advertising. I actually like the concept very much, except when it's abused. And so I, he said, oh, I'm not doing very well in it. And he, and the problem is when you're selling or marketing something and you're not doing very well, it eats away your self-esteem. Doesn't mean the product isn't good. Doesn't mean that you're not a wonderful person. I'm going to tell you, it actually just boils down to the quality of your pitch. Yeah. And you have hundred percent control over the quality of your pitch. So let's get it really good. So I said, well, how do they tell you to start? He said, well, the first thing I do when I meet somebody is I ask them to tell them, you know, tell me about you. Tell me about you. What, what do you want to know? Yeah, yeah, no, tell me about, you know, what do you, I'm like, stop, stop, stop. I don't want to tell you about me. I know about me. And you asking, you have no context. It makes me feel very uncomfortable. So I don't believe that might be the wisest co you know, course of action. In fact, you can make some assumptions of what do you mean? I said, well, I personally sell a handheld fitness product. Now I actually, we did it live. I went on a zoom call, reached out to a friend of mine. She happened to be wearing a tank top and I didn't say anything. I looked at her and I said, I said, um, you work out, right? She's like, yeah, a little bit. I said, do this for me, do that for me. It's like, oh God, I just hate my arms. Well, I knew she was going to say that. Almost all women do. And then I'm like, hey, you know what? Funny thing, I've got a fitness product that's designed to tighten tone right that part of your arm. Hmm. So what you want to actually do, and this is a skill you're going to practice in these lessons, is stop telling people what they need. Oh yeah, no, no, you, you need that, that juice that's going to make you more energetic or, or you need it. Okay, stop telling me what I need because people don't buy what they need, or at least they don't buy what you think they need. Everybody buys 
what they want. So think about that. Well, when you go in and you're at the pharmacy and you buy you know, something to make you feel better, it's because you need it. No, you want to feel better, so you need to purchase that. It's a little tricky, and that's what this, this course is designed to do. It's designed to get you to understand what your customer really wants. Because once they do that, once you've isolated what they want, you can actually kind of circle around and make sure that your product is in fact what they want. Hmm, sound like fun? I know, I love this part of it. <laughs> All right, so that's the want versus needs. Then there's the other funny thing about features versus benefits. The features of this pen, it is white. It has little diamonds in it. it. feels good in your hand. It's got black ink. It's 99 cents. That's great. Those are the features of almost any product. You tell me what they are. People don't buy for features. No, 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 no. Features tell, but benefits sell. Mm, what's the benefit of a pen like this? Well, I'll tell you what, in a day and age where everybody texts and it's so impersonal, I write my clients longhand notes and I stick it in snail mail. And I'll tell you, my business has 10x because of I write notes to people. You might want to try this. Mm, wait, haven't written a check in a long time? I'll tell you what, it feels nice to actually write it out in cursive and send a check and hand it to somebody. Just a thought. Oh, my favorite. When I'm traveling, I love a handwritten note from my loved one. When I was in college, my mom used to write me these notes. I know that a pen like this can actually reach out and touch somebody's heart. Wow, those are the benefits of a pen. Hmm. Features tell, benefits sell. So that's my big M for making assumptions. The next thing, oh, open doors. Hmm. So many of you try to sell people things before they're ready. And then you wonder why they say no so quick. Well, an open door is about creating rapport, creating a relationship. Now, it's funny, if you, if you like LinkedIn, and I just think that's a great platform, so often people say, hey, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. And within two sentences, they're sending you a long list of, well, if you want to earn more money, I have this. And you're like, well, wait a second. I didn't even ask for all of that. I don't know you. You just treated me like a number. You didn't open the door of a relationship. I opened a very powerful door and got myself on a national television show. I went and found, and by the way, the cool thing about the internet now is you can find anybody. In one of our lessons, we're going to start to teach you how to do research. Oh, that's amazing. You know, it'll change your life. And you, don't, you can do it right from the comfort of your own home, sitting right on your phone, if you know what to do. And I guarantee you, they don't teach this stuff in school. They just don't. I've had lots and lots and lots of interns, from marketing to business to law. And they, I'm always surprised at the little basics that are just like left out. I actually took some communication in school. I didn't learn any of this, not by a long shot. So the open door concept is you actually have to care about people. Yeah, I know. You can't just text them going, hey, I got a great opportunity. You should hear about it. I'm hanging out with Forbes Riley, the $2.5 billion. We shut down. And there is a logic and a way in which the brain works that I have been studying for decades. Started out as an actress where you have to memorize thousands and thousands of words, hundreds of pages. How do you do that? Well, I kind of figured out a couple of ways that the brain works. There's an area of your brain where your short-term memory is stored, your long-term memory is stored. There's a way that you can access memories and synapses. For example, as an actress, if I have to break out crying, well, I have techniques for that that I've worked on. Hmm. So you kind of manipulate your own brain. And the other thing I'm gonna teach, I won't teach it right now, but it's fascinating to me, is I've spent a lot of time studying hypnosis. The conscious brain versus the unconscious brain. Yeah, putting in subliminal messages, doing all kind of interesting tips and tricks that the average person just doesn't spend any time thinking about. So how about we pretend that we're no longer average? One of my favorite characters is Morpheus from The Matrix. I got two pills for you here. If you take the blue one, everything stays the same and you'll live your life just fine and you won't be disruptive and you won't listen to how people say things and you're just, everything's fine. You take my red pill, everything's going to get different. The way you listen, the way you communicate, the size of your bank account, the amount of friends, your level of happiness, it will all change. I know that. Yeah. You ready for the red pill? Me too. Let's get back to money. M-O-N. N is for no. You like the word no? Hmm. No has a funny connotation. No, 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 don't do that. As a kid, you've, you've heard no thousands and thousands of times. I wish that you didn't. 
One of the things I, I benefited from maybe being an older parent is I tried not to say no to my kids, but I got them to actually say no for me. I found that was much more effective. I remember, <laughs> sorry. I remember when the kids were little and I just hated when kids would like walk up to the front of the grocery store line and just whine going, mommy, I want chocolate, I want this, I want that. I was like, oh, oh guys, the I want, I want things just made me crazy. So I remember and I've got two beautiful little twins, they're about three years old and McKenna was over there by the candy aisle and I thought, hmm, hey, can you grab me an apple? And she looked at me and said, there's no apples here, mommy. I said, well, how about an orange or a grape? And she's like, there's actually nothing healthy. And believe me, at three years old, they knew healthy and not healthy because they hung out with Jack LaLanne, the godfather of juicing and fitness. We hung out with him a lot. I did a lot of infomercials with him. And his big motto was, if man made it, don't eat it. And the little kids walk around going, mommy, did man make that? I said, no, that's, that's, that's pretty much processed, manufactured. And we, so they kind of knew what healthy was. And I said, McKenna, what's going on over there? She said, it's all just sugar and candy. And I said, oh, wow. And then I pause and she looked at me and she said, I think bad men put that there to trick us. I said, ooh, I think you're right. Do you know every time we'd walk up to the aisle to check out in the grocery store, the kids would both look at me and go, oh, I know, bad men put that there to trick us. I never had to say the word no. It was fascinating. I love the whole psychology of how the human brain works. You're gonna hear more and more of that through all my teachings. So let's get back to no. Does no mean stop or go? Mm, think about it. Well, funny thing is, I didn't know about it either. I actually hated no. And oh, I'm one of the best salesmen ever. Yeah, but you give me a no and I felt rejected. I don't like the feeling of rejection. It doesn't, doesn't sit very well with me. Probably not you either. Well, so my son walks up to me. He's five years old, little tiny little boy. And I'm at my desk one night. And he's like, mommy, I'm like what? He's like, can I have a piece of candy? I said, no, no, it's dinner time. Go, go, go play. I'll, I'm getting ready for dinner. Five minutes later, comes back. He's like, mommy, what? Can I have a piece of chocolate if I eat my broccoli? I'm like, no, come on, go, go play with your Legos. I'm almost finished. Five minutes later, there he is again. Mommy, I'm five years old and I just want a piece of candy. And I couldn't stop laughing. It was so cute. And I'm like, all right, fine. I said, yes. Now, funny thing, he didn't come back. He didn't come back when he got a yes, but he kept coming back when he got no's. And I thought for a second, I thought maybe no doesn't mean stop. Maybe it means N-O, never ending opportunity. <laughs> you asked the wrong person the wrong question. He was gonna keep coming back until he got a yes. He was relentless. The greatest little salesman on earth turned out to be a five-year-old who wanted a piece of candy. How many no's have you gotten? What have you done with them? If you start to think about things a little differently, Everything in life changes. All right, let's get to the E. End, begin with the end in mind. You know, when I started this entire series, I had one thought in my mind, that you were gonna become a great pitcher. You're gonna get what you wanted and live an amazing, happy life. How am I doing? Well, it is my goal and you're only on lesson one. <laughs> we got a little ways to go. I promise you by the end of this training, you're gonna be just like all my people going, oh my gosh, I love this. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. And that's one of the things that you want from your customers. Yes, you want money. Yes, you want respect. Yes, you want their emails. Yes, yeah. you know what you really want? You want a thank you. Thank you for introducing me to these new concepts. Thank you for exploding my mind and my bank account. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And feel free to comment either below or on my Facebook and say thank you anytime you want. I can't hear that one enough. And then finally, the big why at the end of this, M-O-N-E-Y. Well, why not? <laughs> why actually stands for yes. Yes to what? Yes to closing. Yes to more money. Yes to you living a great life. Yes, 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 and yes. Become a yes collector. Become a no collector. I know, you're like, wait a second, this is so interesting. Good, I hope so. The goal, M-O-N-E-Y, it should be raining from the, from the sky for you. It should no longer be an issue, and I'm going to tell you, in one of my upcoming lessons, I'm going to teach you how to make money anytime you want. Oh, I'll see you in the next lesson.